This is question 17, deals with acoustics. Uh, and we're given a room over here on the right with some dimensions. We're given a formula and what the different variables are. And, we says, and it says, the room on the right has NRC 0.55 material on the walls. So the first question is, what is the difference between SAC and NRC? SAC is sound absorbing coefficient, um, and NRC is noise reduction coefficient. And if we look at a cut sheet for some kind of um, foam panel, I just found this on the internet, I'll put this up on the addendum, uh, the course addendum website. But basically you're gonna see all these values in the table, and those are your SAC values, your sound absorbing coefficient values. And anytime it's a coefficient, usually it's a number between zero and one, and it's a multiplier of how well or how how well or how poorly something performs. So in this case, you're gonna have a, zero, a number between zero and one, and a higher number means that object um, is going to absorb more sound. NRC is the average of some of the most common uh, frequencies, and if you add these up, 0.65 is not actually the average of these um, values. I don't know exactly how it's calculated, but basically the NRC is the is the average value of some of the most common frequencies that you're going to want to find sound absorbing coefficients for. So in a lot of cases, you might see these things used interchangeably. It might ask you what is the SAC or the NRC um, with no other information. And in that case, you use the NRC in place of SAC. You see in our formula, it says the absorption equals the SAC times basically the surface area, and we're given NRC. And so in this case, you can plug it in. If the question had something said something more specific, like you have a two inch panel, um, and what is the SAC at say a thousand hertz, then you'd have to find your specific value. But um, otherwise, NRC is what you want. So that's the difference between uh, SAC and NRC. So the next part of the question asks, what is the total absorption of the walls? In this case, we just use our formula and plug in some values. Uh, and so you saw, I already did the math. Our formula is the total absorption equals the sound efficient, sound absorbing coefficient times S, which is the uh, area of the walls. In this case, we've got four walls. That's one of them. And we're given that they're 20 feet wide by 10 feet tall over here on the story pole. And then we're given in the question, NRC equals 0.55. And so we know that we plug in the 0.55 for the, for the SAC. So our formula becomes 20 times 10, that's the area of one wall, times four, because we got four of them, equals 800 square feet. SAC, in this case, equals NRC is 0.5. So the absorption equals 0.55 times 800, which equals 440. The next part of the question just says, what if the total absorption you used was 0.8 instead? In this case, all we do is replace the 0.55 with 0.8. We get 0.8 times 800, we get 640. And the last question says, considering only the sound formula, it would be better to increase the overall NRC by 20% or the wall area by 20%. And in this case, you'd get the same answer because the formula is just the SAC multiplied by the area. So if you increase either by 20%, uh, it's gonna be the same thing. But this question is a good example of, of using a formula to solve a word problem where you might not consider the formula right away. So if, you're, if you encounter a question on a test about what is the best sound strategy or what's the best structural strategy or what's the best strategy for something and you're not sure, consider any formulas that you know, um, that you know or that are on the test you can look up and what those might tell you about uh, how the different systems work.